another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows a good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. In the parable of the wheat and tares, Jesus described the two different kinds of people in the world, the wheat and the tares, the children of God and the children of the devil. Some of the children of the devil plainly state their unbelief, but some are false Christians that hide among the true Christians. They are weeds in the wheat. False Christians are sometimes revealed by their later denial of the faith. They're falling away. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. False Christians are sometimes revealed by their lack of fruit or bad fruit. Jesus said, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Still other false Christians hide among the true Christians. They might appear to be Christians on the outside, but they have never accepted Jesus. Like the false prophets, they may come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Although people may fool you, they do not fool God. The Lord knows those who are His. I am the Good Shepherd, and I know my sheep. Salvation comes through Jesus alone. He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The good seed is described as wheat, a grain crop that was needed for food. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, and if sons, or children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Those that live for God live a sacrificial life, and through Jesus they inherit the kingdom of heaven. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The devil purposely sabotages the crops in the world, and he does it with stealth. While men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. This is bioterrorism, the purposeful planting of tares, weeds, among the wheat in an attempt to destroy another man's crops and the devil tries to hide what he is doing in the dark, while men sleep, while they are distracted. The tares, possibly the darnel plant, would hide among the wheat until the plant matured and the head was seen. Satan, the devil, is trying to disrupt the world and the church with the presence of non-believers, people that he has blinded, 
who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them. The tares are the sons of the wicked one and they will not go to heaven. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The tares may hide among the wheat for a time, but they will be clearly seen at the end. In the parable, the servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. In God's wisdom, he has allowed both the wheat and tares to continue growing together. God has given people freedom to choose or reject him. God does not want Christians to damage the crop in trying to gather up the tares. It is God's job to gather up the tares and bring ultimate judgment. God is the righteous judge and knows the hearts of all people. We would not always judge righteously and could bring shame upon God's name. As Jesus was headed to Jerusalem, he sent his disciples to prepare his way. The disciples, James and John, responded to rejection with anger and an unrighteous judgment. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. We do not have the power to condemn, to pronounce final judgment upon an individual. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? We are not even to judge professing Christians in the judicial sense. If a person professes to be a Christian, we should treat them as a Christian. They will give an account to him who's ready to judge the living and the dead. So what about church discipline? Are we not called to judge church members? For what have I to do with judging those also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? We are to address sin in the church. Jesus said, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. The goal is reconciliation. If a professed Christian is living in unconfessed sin, other Christians should lovingly pursue them. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. If a professed Christian refuses to repent, they should be considered an evangelistic prospect. Their life testifies they need Jesus, and such people should not be allowed to have influence in the church. Purge out the old leaven that sinful influence, that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened, for indeed Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. The church is to reject and remove sin from the body of believers, for Jesus died for our sins, not for us to continue living in sin, but we should always be cautious with church discipline, for we can get wrapped up in our emotions, and we are not always righteous judges of others. Jesus said, 
judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite! First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. This judgment is not in the judicial sense. We do not have the ability to condemn others. This judgment is needed to be able to practice church discipline. And Jesus points out the challenge that we face. We must remove the plank, sin, from our own life before addressing the sin of another. And we are to do this type of judgment. But Jesus ends this passage with a word of caution. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. We are to be helpful and evangelistic in our dealing with others. But there comes a point with some people that we must move on. If a person refuses to receive the gospel and continues to attack you, God may lead you to move from that person. God is the ultimate judge that will deal with all people. It is a reality that currently Christians and non-believers live side by side in the world, but eternity will be different. Jesus said, At the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. The tares burn in hell, the wheat is gathered in heaven. The reapers are the angels. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness. The good angels follow God's orders, and are used as instruments of judgment. Angels are different creations from people. The angels were not made in the image of God. People are made in the image of God, and people do not turn into angels when they die. The angels are the reapers of the harvest, and people are either wheats or tares. That is, a person is either a child of God or a child of the devil. The children of the devil practice lawlessness. They are not covered by the blood of Jesus. They practice lawlessness because they are not empowered by the Holy Spirit like Christians. The promise to the wheat, to Christians, is that you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, that is the spirit of the Antichrist, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The wheat will persevere, and they will go to heaven. The righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. But the tares, those that have rejected Christ, will be cast into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. There is no repentance, only sorrow and pain for eternity. And those in hell will be alive in hell. They will not be destroyed. In the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, Jesus describes the rich man as alive and conscious in hell. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And in the book of Revelation, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. At the end of the world, we find the devil thrown into hell. The beast and the false prophet were already thrown into hell before the devil. Yet, there they still are in hell, not destroyed. And the devil, the beast, the false prophet, all demons and all the lost will be tormented day and night forever and ever. All people will live forever, and it will be either in heaven or hell. Jesus tells us to pay attention. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, 
the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows a good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear.